Hi, this is Carl Polichuk and this is another SOP video for managed service providers. Today we're going to talk about hiring versus outsourcing technicians. One of the biggest steps that everybody has to go through as they grow their business is to hire their first employee. And so the questions are, do you hire somebody full-time or part-time? And then do you hire somebody in-house or do you outsource them? This is fundamentally a question about cash flow. It's amazingly expensive to have employees. It starts with the fact that you have to pay workers comp, you have to pay taxes, there's some other things. In the United States, you can easily depend on paying about 1.25 to 1.5 times the salary in additional taxes and benefits. So think about, for example, if somebody earns $17 an hour, you're going to end up paying about $25 an hour. So just get used to that idea. So that's very important. And that sounds like, okay, 25 is very reasonable because, hey, I charge $100 an hour. But also remember, employees are never 100% billable. We fool ourselves into thinking that we're going to be able to easily make up that money. But $25 an hour at 40 hours a week is $1,000 a week. That means they have to be able to bill solid seven to 10 hours a week in order for you to break even. So that's not extra money. And one of the things people don't realize is that very frequently after you hire your first employee, you don't really make any more money because you haven't got that much work. And when you give work to somebody who doesn't have to deal with administration, what happens is they can actually do a lot more work than you can because you're always dealing with paperwork and so forth. In addition, you will get less work done because even the best employee takes some management, some oversight. You have to assign them tasks. You have to decide what they're doing and what they're not doing. You have to chat with them about your processes and procedures. It takes time and energy for you to have an employee. So you will bill a little bit less. They will bill more than you so you, it might end up being a wash when it's all said and done. Or they'll plow through your backlog and now they got nothing to do because you just don't have that many hours available. There are a couple of easy ways to get around this. One is hire somebody part-time. That is, hire somebody if you can for 10 or 15 hours a week. Throw them the work that you can what's going to happen in that situation is they're going to be a lot more billable because they're going to be very very focused on just doing those few things on the other hand be prepared for them to leave because let's be honest who wants to work 10 hours a week when you know they can clearly be looking for a full-time job so don't feel bad if somebody leaves you because they can't live on 10 hours a week even at 17 18 dollars an hour so Think about that. So that's one option. And actually it's a really good option because it gets them onto your payroll. All the questions about whether or not they're an employee versus a contractor go away. The other option is to hire a contractor or outsource. When you outsource, expect to pay more. So somebody might not be able to work for less than $25 if they're going to be outsourced. And remember, after taxes and whatever, that gives them an effective rate right back down at the 17 or 18 that we started out with. So those are just example numbers. And obviously, where you live, all the economics are going to be a little bit different. But you get the point. It's about the same cost either way. If you hire somebody for a one-time job, you say, I just need somebody like say in Los Angeles to just do this one piece of work for me, then it's a completely different story. There you're probably going to look at something like a 70-30 split, which is a, a great little number, a great place to start. I learned that through the SMBTN, the SMB Technology Network. What they do is they recommend that their members do a 70-30 split. So basically you start in that area for splitting up the work. And the way it works is basically I'm bringing the work so I get to keep about 30%. You are doing the work so you get to keep about 70%. So in a nice round number, if I charge $100 an hour to the client, I'm going to pay you 70. I'm going to keep 30. I bring the work. You do the work. It's a nice split. Now, depending on what your rate is, 125, 150, whatever, you might 
you know, adjust that a little bit so it's nice round numbers, but basically it's a good place to start. Remember, in the United States anyway, there's a long list of requirements to determine whether or not somebody is an employee or a contractor. And the IRS is very clear about what these things are. It's actually one of the reasons why the service agreements that I write are so specific about these things because I want to make sure that it's real clear that I am a contractor and not an employee and there are requirements in terms of telling somebody where to go, when to be there, what to do first, what to do second, which tools to use, you know, which checklists to use, that sort of thing. So make sure that you have a good contract with your subcontractors to make sure that they truly are able to be paid on that basis and not as employees. If you do it wrong, you could end up having to pay their taxes in addition to paying the higher rate that you've already paid. So be careful about that. Make sure that you talk to somebody who's knowledgeable, either your tax attorney, your accountant, your enrolled agent, or your payroll people if you have a payroll service. Get professional advice and go slowly, make sure that you do it right, make sure that you're legal and that you get all the taxes taken care of because at the end of the day, that's all the government really cares about is getting their share of the taxes. Final word, go slow, take your time, do the math, make sure that you know what you're getting into, make sure that it's affordable. Don't promise somebody 40 hours a week at a high wage and then they come in and scoop up all the work and now you've got nothing to do and, and you've got to lay them off. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. So just go slow, take your time, make sure you know what you're doing. If you do it carefully and you do it right, you'll be able to make that person very profitable and you're going to be able to then step up and hire another and another and another. And then you're going to truly move away from being a sole proprietor into having a larger company. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Polichuk wishing you all the luck in your managed service business.